I would like to talk to you guys today about cold stress and neonates. So you guys, during fetal development, the baby was suspended in amniotic fluid and that amniotic fluid was 98.6 degrees. So the baby never had to regulate his or her temperature. So the hypothalamus never had to do any work in regard to temperature regulation. So when the baby comes out, the baby's hypothalamus is very immature and the baby has some, a system to help the baby stay warm or the neonate stay warm while that immature hypothalamus begins to mature. And remember, the baby didn't use the hypothalamus for temperature regulation in utero. The baby only uses it when it comes out. It takes about three days, roughly three to four days for the hypothalamus to mature in the term neonate. So let's talk about how the baby stays warm when the baby comes out that first two or three days. So the first thing is that babies gain a lot of weight in the third trimester. Really the first trimester is really just organogenesis. Their organs are developing and then the second trimester they start to grow and they have more organogenesis. And then in the third trimester is really when the baby begins to put on fat and specifically brown fat. So the baby has regular adipose and then has some um, brown fat that is very vascular, meaning there's tons of blood vessels going to this fat. And this particular brown fat is located um, under the sternum and under, underneath the uh, scapulas in the back. So the baby has this nice little um, area that it has this brown fat. So we really are happy that babies who are not under stress in utero and that go to the third trimester and that are a normal weight, they have brown fat. And this brown fat is wonderful because babies have, because their, their um, hypothalamus is immature, they keep themselves warm by non- shivering thermogenesis and what that means is they go to this brown fat and they access this brown fat and that first two or three days that can help them stay warm. Um, what's really nice about that brown fat since it's so vascular, vascular is when their blood sugar drops, let's say they miss a breastfeeding or something happens, um, they can access that brown fat to improve their glucose. Um, so it's a great little system. The only problem is, is that when babies are born before the third trimester or babies are born and they've already used some of that brown fat in utero, they don't have it when they come out. And so we really have to look at cold stress um, in the neonate. Um, normal babies, um, they can get cold and they can start accessing uh, this brown fat. But we really worry about the babies who are small for gestational age. They didn't, you know, get, gain a lot of weight. They're really small. They don't have that brown fat. And preterm babies. That's the biggest ones. And then, of course, anybody who had trouble in utero. So let's say during their labor, um, the baby... Um, the mom had too many contractions, let's say. So the, the baby had a lot of stressful events and the baby did not get as much nutrients during that time frame. So it had to rely on the brown fat and that can cause there to be problems with this brown fat regulation. So um, you can see that it's limited in those people. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about respiratory distress. So we know that in the third trimester, the, and then you learn this from anatomy and physiology, that the baby starts to secrete surfactant, fetal lung surfactant. And that is a slippery lipoprotein 
that holds the alveolar open so the oxygen can go there and it can be transported to the vasculature. So sadly, babies have um, a high surface area. So they have a lot of surface area compared to um, their organ systems. So what that means is, is that babies can get cold very quickly just because of their body surface area. So when they get cold, they have an increase of O2 consumption, meaning they need more oxygen and that can increase their respiratory rate. So what's sad about that is, is when they have an elevation in their respiratory rate, it causes a pulmonary vasoconstriction, which means that everything vasoconstricts in the pulmonary regions. And now they have a peripheral vasoconstriction because they're cold and all of these little vessels out here constricted. And so now they have decreased oxygen to their tissues and they have decreased oxygen uptake to their lungs. Again, it's because the pulmonary vasoconstriction decreases the amount of available oxygen to the lungs and the peripheral vasoconstriction decreases the amount of oxygen to the tissues. The baby will actually turn blue in front of you. Um, of course, this increases anaerobic glycolysis, which can decrease the um, available glucose and it can decrease oxygen and the pH, which can result in metabolic acidosis, and that can throw them into respiratory distress. So we do not ever want our baby to get cold. So I kind of like wanted to put the three of these together for you, and I call it the triad of doom because it's kind of easy to understand like this. So we know that babies need brown fat, and they use it for three things. They use it for for, I'm sorry, here, let me put this, oh, let me fix this for you, because it's hard to see, hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, so, um, th with the triad of doom, so we know that the babies use the brown fat to keep them warm, and we know that they use the brown fat to keep their blood sugars up. So that's awesome, that's great. However, if they go into respiratory distress, grunting, retractions, and nasal flaring, we know that that increases their need for glucose, which can decrease their glucose. And if their, ink, if their glucose decreases, or if they start to use that brown fat at all, let's say for glucose, that could put them into cold stress. So at the bottom, at the, the bottom line, at the end of the day, if your baby is cold, warm it up. That's the, that's the biggest thing. So you always take the axillary temperature. All babies are at risk. You really need to take the axillary temperature. If it's, if they're cold, you want to put a hat on them, two blankets, put them skin to skin with mom, whatever to warm them up initially. And if they're still cold in five minutes, you definitely need to get some intervention. And when you get that intervention, you need to take their blood sugar and do a respiratory assessment. You want to check their O2 sat. You want to make sure that they don't have any grunting retractions or nasal flaring. Same thing with hypoglycemia. Let's say, for instance, you have a baby come out and it has a low blood sugar. Well, we know that if it doesn't have enough glucose to increase this blood sugar, we know that the baby does not have enough glucose to increase this temperature. And we also know that that can throw the baby into respiratory distress. So if you have a baby who has low blood sugar under 45, because we always want baby blood sugars to be above 45. Now you're going to see in different institutions and different settings, it's going to be anywhere from 45 to 55, and that's okay. But for NCLEX and for testing, you should know that anything under 45 is considered hypoglycemia for a neonate. So if we have a baby that is hypoglycemic, we need to do something stat. We need to either, if the ba if it's 40, let's say it's 40, it's not really bad. Um, we can get that baby into breastfeed. But let's say it's 20. If we put the baby to breast, the baby's going to have to do a whole lot of work to breastfeed, and that's going to burn calories. So we may need to do a supplemental feed feeding, like a finger feeding of formula. 
Now let's, let's look at respiratory distress. Of course, if our baby has grunting retractions and nasal flaring, we know they're using up a ton of glucose. So we got to monitor these both very quickly. Now, if we have a baby that is, um, that we have any problems with, first of all, the smaller they are, we know they don't have brown fat. So we just try to keep them warm. So um, we can double wrap them with a warm blanket. Let's just say they're just they're just small for gestational age and put, put a hat on them. But if this doesn't work, we need to put them in this radiant warmer. And this radiant warmer has heat that comes down. And there's a little skin probe that tells this how hot to become to make the baby 97.7 um, axillary. Now, if that doesn't work, all right, let's say the baby is really premature. Let's say it's a preterm baby. This baby may have to be put in a room of their own, and that's called an isolate. And you see these in the NICU, and these are 92-degree rooms. Um, there's nothing magical about this room other than that the nurses don't want to work in an environment that's 92 degrees. So we let the little babies have their own 92-degree environment. So nursing interventions for cold stress, obviously... We have to assess for it. We have to, if you walk into a room and a baby's like open and doesn't have a blanket on it or is not skin to skin with mom, you need to take a temperature and you need to explain to mom and dad that for the first couple three days, uh, first couple of, or three days, um, the baby needs to be kept warm with a hat and blankets. Um, but after that, the hypothalamus is then mature and you dress them like the parents would be dressed. Um, that's a very significant point because a lot of parents want to go home and continue to overdress their babies and then they can actually cause them hyperthermia. So you want to do a lot of teaching. Now hypoglycemia, of course, nursing interventions would be if they can breastfeed, if the blood sugar is not too low, get them to the rest. If the blood sugar is really low, we don't want them to do any hard work um, and drive it down even further. So we may give them some formula supplement. Um, we don't have to do it through a bottle. We can do it with finger feeding. Um, or if it's really low, I've seen it where it was like five. Of course, we had to do an IV with um, D5. And then respiratory distress, of course, we would do an assessment, a respiratory assessment. And then, of course, we would give oxygen. You know, we give blow by oxygen. Um, we would really watch the baby close um, and we would get some help. That's for sure. And when a baby's in respiratory distress, this is definitely a trip um, to the nursery or sometimes to the neonatal intensive care unit. So just a little bit about respiratory, I mean, about cold stress. Thank you.